Uh oh, according to numbers recently released, it appears that the Nintendo Switch in less than two years may have passed the Xbox One console in sales. Say it ain't so. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. Hey, I appreciate all of y'all straight up because I'm not too proud to ask. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so numbers recently released by um, Daniel Ahmad. Um, and if you guys don't know who Daniel Ahmad is, he is an analyst within the gaming industry. I think the company that he works for is Nico Group, and, and I could have butchered that or got that all wrong altogether, but he's a known and accredited uh, uh, um, analyst that's um, active on social media. He sent out reports that show that the Nintendo Switch is officially around 36 million, right? And that 36 million by accounts by many credible sources could be more than what Xbox has sold as far as its consoles are concerned. Now you guys may say, hold on MM2K, you're, you're low balling this here, you're being toxic, but hear me out here. There's been various sources, including sources that we've had brought on to the broadband bully shows our, ourselves. Um, a guy by the name of John Petty, that's part of the John Petty uh, uh, research firm, They've worked with companies like Samsung and all the other stuff. This is not your grandson's basement group, <laughs> you know, basement band. You know what I'm saying? These are some serious analysts. And in working with John Petty on particular podcasts, we were able to, to discover and dig up numbers that showed that at the beginning of 2018, that Microsoft hadn't even ordered 40 million sock chips yet for their consoles. So going into 2018, if you haven't even ordered 40 million sock chips yet, then there are not 40 million consoles out there. If you take into fact that between 2018 and now, the Xbox has had some of the worst sales it has ever had throughout this entire generation. It hasn't won a single NPD since um, the Xbox One X was released. Then it's not hard to fathom that they may still be stuck around 35 million that was the latest estimate that we may have heard from various other sources okay um could be higher you know what i mean but who knows with that being said because for full disclosure again microsoft does not release console cell numbers with that being said if this is true <laughs> if the xbox has been outdone in consoles which I, even if it isn't now, it's going to happen. I think one thing that people cannot argue is that eventually we're going to get there. We're going to get there and some, we're going to get there sometime this year. Nobody wants an Xbox One family of consoles. They're doing the worst again that they've done all generation. Once that occurs, once a handheld device with the lowest fidelity out there destroys the Xbox in sales along with PlayStation. But the thing that makes it even worse if Nintendo does it is Nintendo's only been out for less than two years. One's gotta ask themselves, has Xbox fully hit rock bottom? And if they have hit rock bottom, what can they do to alleviate it? Well, here's the thing. Again, people wanna say MM2K, you and the bullies are toxic. Y'all keep regurgitating the same thing. No, it's just the fact that y'all don't wanna wrap your heads around the, the notion that Xbox isn't focused on you. If someone, if you're someone that wants, <clears throat> excuse me, hardcore quality content, AAA content, they're not focused on you. They're trying to catapult past you. And we've been giving solutions. And the solutions that I'm gonna give today and the things I'm gonna talk about right now are the things that they need to do to get themselves out of rock bottom to better help position themselves going into next gen for their two billion strategy. Okay? I, it's not so much that I care that they're focusing for two billion. We just need them to, to be laser focused on specific content while enacting the strategy and they gotta give care to their brands. So let's talk about these issues and what they need to do to solve it. First and foremost, there's a lack of AAA exclusive content to the ecosystem. Like I said, just said, I don't care where you put your device. You can put it on a PC, whatever, a refrigerator. I don't give a damn. All right, as my boy Masters, I don't give a damn, okay? 
but the problem is is that you have to show care that enough care to AAA content and you have to show top-notch AAA developers that your ecosystem is going to be a lucrative place for their products that's not happening right now hence why you're seeing this half-ass development when it comes to the xbox one x i have a 500 dollars console but yet there are products out there that look better on 200 dollars counterparts than my 500 dollars console i have this world's strongest console that should not be happening there should be nothing on a competing console particularly 200 dollars one that looks better than everything on my 500 dollars console that is absurd all right so and the reason why you have that lazy development again because triple a top-notch developers don't feel that microsoft is putting their all behind their current consoles behind their current ecosystem when it comes to triple a content so they're like why would we cut off our nose to spite our face we're going to make sure that our stuff still looks fantastic on uh playstation regardless of what the power is on paper for this thing so again we need xbox every rededication to triple a content um and show developers is lucrative on our ecosystem also they they need to have more dedication to the dedicated devices okay now i get it you may be saying to yourself mm2k that's an oxymoron you don't care where you get your games at but you want them to be specific in their support to the dedicated device and yes hear me out here's why i say this you cannot you, you cannot overlook the importance that consoles play in gaming. And people do so erroneously by making comparisons to streaming movies and streaming music. Even when it comes to streaming, streaming movies, the, the end point of which you experience that media is so much different when it relates to gaming. It has so much of an impact as it relates to gaming than it does any other type of media. For instance, if I pull up a soundtrack on my phone and I go play it on my computer, the difference in quality is cross-balanced with things like earphones, stuff like that, to where it's just a plug and play, switch to this, come from that type of experience, right? Even the same with movies in some regards, yes. You, you may want to you know, enjoy a movie on a bigger screen, but because of the condensed pixelation that's on the phone, even if you're watching a movie in 720p on your phone, it's not that much gruesome than watching it from 1080p on a big old TV, or even 4K for that matter. But when it comes to gaming, you have to worry about things like latency, along with fidelity and overall performance and you got to cross balance that you know what i'm saying those points cost effectively that's you don't have those problems when you're switching from phone to computer to tablet when you're listening to music or even with movies so you have people that may switch to their phone and stuff in their pc to listen to music or even watch a movie but they'll never do that when it comes to gaming for those factors alone so your console has to have value because your console is supposed to be the best place you're going to get that triple a experience at that dedicated device so if you don't support the best place where triple a experiences can be held again how can you be a lucrative uh, um, ecosystem for triple a development it all goes hand in hand. So whether MM2K don't care if he's streaming or playing on his PC, that person that's willing to only stick to the console has to have and see that value. Because if they see the value, then it's going to portray and it's going to be relayed to the developer. So they need support. And if you're telling people, I don't care if I sell you a console or not, that is sending a bad signal to developers, period. It's common sense. Don't listen to these cappers out there. They're making no damn sense. The console needs to have specific upfront and dedicated value to ensure AAA devs, again, will continue to support the platform. And even though you're putting stuff everywhere, Microsoft, you've made that hard 
but you're the richest company in the world. You can figure it out. <laughs> I'll still add benefit to the console amidst, amidst all of this. And lastly, the last problem. Again, let's recap. They don't have AAA content dedication, period. They don't have dedication to um, dedicated device support. And lastly, there's just untrustworthiness when it comes to the Xbox direction. direction. You know what I'm saying? Now, you got people out here that are proclaiming the fact that they're going to have all these studios, and that means that, you know, that, that things are on the uptick. But, but what does having these studios mean? You know what I'm saying? When you have a horrible track record, yet you're not willing to show specifics to help overcome that, pre that previous track record. It don't matter if you got the dream team. If you got a, a coach that don't know how to meld all that talent together, they're going to lose, as we saw in the Olympics years back. Right? So, again, we got to see specific things, specific ideas, specific direction as far as what they plan to give us in the realm of AAA content. Until then, like your boy always say, these are just 13 empty red solo cups or 14 or 50, whatever the hell they are. I need to see what they're gonna do under the direction of Phil. Speaking of Phil, let's just get to the nitty gritty. Phil just lies too much, all right? <laughs> the, if you got somebody that wants to tell you that Crackdown 3, um, that he's working to put it in the light of Halo Gears and Forza, and he had to pull it back and he put it out there, he says, now it feels like it's the game that Xbox gamers deserve. You know what I'm saying? And you got somebody out here saying that every E3 is gonna be better than the previous one, and the entire lineup of games is gonna be better, the best game lineup we've ever seen. It's gonna be the most special year of gaming that we've ever seen, when in fact, since Phil has even been the head of studios, we have not seen a game lineup from Xbox that is better than 2008 before he was officially given that job. Being that you got lies like that, VR's come, all this stuff that he, that, that there, they, there's not enough trust in the fill bucket. <laughs> there's not enough trust coins in the fill bucket to, to, to buy what he's selling right now. And Phil just needs to shut up at the very least and not say anything else until next generation. I'm serious. He just has to shut up because you can't bank anything off of what he says. In addition to that, another problem with Phil is Phil thinks that in order to stay in Sachi's good graces, he must disregard and speak past the hardcore content consumer. And I say that because one of the things that were relevant in a Fortune Magazine um, interview that he did is Phil has this mantra where he wants to work without pressure. He wants a pressureless atmosphere. He just wants everything to be hunky dory. People to just play hacky sack and, and while they're developing game. He wants there to be no pressure. I, someone that worked in a Fortune 500 world, I don't mind pressure. I love pressure. I love overcoming challenges. You know, whether it's individual challenges that I have or challenges with my team to, and we, and we highlight and showcase that and we reward the team in front of everybody to show, hey, we are capable individuals and we're willing to tackle any task. I, I, I don't mind a challenge. I don't mind pressure. I love pressure, right? Phil's not built like that. And it seems like what Phil's built on is being liked. Phil loves working the, the circuit and, and, and working his charm effective. He doesn't like being pressured into things. As you can see in that Fortune Magazine interview where he was being pressured and he, and he got agitated and he started giving responses that I think Wow, <laughs> they just, they critically damage the Xbox brand even further. That's why I said he needs to shut up until next generation. So, but the problem with that is because he's he has that nature about him, he thinks in order to enact Satya's plan that he got to bring this, this coffee shop type of gaming. And that's already been proven wrong. Under the Satya regime, Mike Yabar helped usher in PUBG, which was more hardcore, which was more to the liking of the Xbox gaming brass, right? It got the Xbox gaming brass uh, more excited than anything that Phil has initiated, right? On his own. And it was exclusive content, even though it was time. You know what I'm saying? It helped tremendously invigorate the Xbox core. If Yabar can do that, just given that opportunity, I think he could do a lot more better if he's given the opportunity full time. Meaning, I think Mike Yabar should just take the helm. I don't think Phil is the guy that 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 need that that can give us this AAA content that can help usher in things for the hardcore content wanter and help mend 
the community back together and help Xbox be successful. I don't think he can do all of those things. He's better suited at the ESA elsewhere. We can focus on all gamers. But in order to satisfy the Xbox brass and help Xbox be a successful brand, not only financially, but to its consumer base in, in, in totality, I think we need somebody like Mike Yabar. So those are my three solutions. You know what I'm saying? We need uh, more focus on AAA content to the ecosystem. We need a way for there to be special benefits to the dedicated device, their console. And then also we need Xbox to work on their untrustworthiness. And I've laid out how. So with that being said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, I spent a lot of time on this, a lot more than I intended to. Uh, this ended up being triple the time, but I thought it was worth covering, you know what I'm saying, for Xbox to get out of their, their world. So with that said, check out the Broadband Bullies, check out PNTS Network, and definitely check out the HNDC uh, Hard Knock Digital Culture on twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Most 2000. With that being said, hey, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.